Hi friends, host Eric here, host Talking with Fantasy People, and I'm chatting with my girlfriend Rachel here, who lives in New York City, or not the city, but in New York and Long Island, and uh, we had a conversation earlier today that branched off into cognitive functions and such, and I regretted not recording it because it would have made a good video, it was interesting and so forth. Uh, so I thought next time we chatted I'd record and probably I'll just uh, edit some segments out of this. So, um, yeah. one of the things that we we talked about a little bit earlier was duality and the idea that duality works. And you had mentioned that you were kind of mad at socionics. Yes. I'm glad that I, you know, only kind of within the past year or two got into uh, socionics and uh, the duality thing because now that I know that I am an INFJ, it's it's kind of making me look at my relationships more closely. And I do not have, a, as an INFJ, I never had any good relationships with ESTP. <laughs> and you've got a couple in your family, right? Yeah, I have, my uncle Paul is an ESTP. And my grandma uh, is an ESTP. Now, we also dated one or two ESTPs, right? One in college? One, yeah, one in college that I, you know, recall of. Others, you know, I'm not really sure, but... And the one in college, you ended up kind of chasing him, and he'd, he'd convey to you, like, you're so special to me, of course, you're super important, but then when it came down to it, he wanted to keep his options open. Yeah, he would... Um... It was like I was too much of a challenge for him. Like, I brought out too many of the feels. We had, like, you know, intimate, intimate, um, not even, like, intimate sexually, but, like, intimate conversations of very personal topics. Mm. And we would always seem so close, and then, poof, he'd be gone. It'd be, he'd be, he'd disappear, um, leaving me to be like, what the fuck? And, you know, I, um, it was, that was more of an illusion to me than an ENTP relation because it had all the smoke and mirrors, you know, like on paper, we probably made sense. Actually, we did make sense to a lot of people. Our friends pushed us together, Mm -hmm. you know, after some time. And, um, it was just one of the most disappointing things that I ever got involved in. It really, like, it made me feel my worth felt like nothing in that relationship. Hmm. Well, you know, the thing, one thing you introduced me to was a concept that there are two kinds of, like, soul connections, so to speak. Twin, twin flame and soulmate. Mm-hmm. Now, regarding that distinction, I would say, you know, obviously, it's not very clear-cut distinction in the sense that um, there's not any any particular logic behind it, but um, what I would say about that is I experienced something similar with my dual ISFJ. Now, granted, she she had other things going on besides just being an ISFJ, but um, the, the ultimate conclusion from the end of that relationship was that it didn't really impact my self-worth very much, but I had concluded for sure that she held me in absolute disdain and had valued me not at all by the end of the relationship. And I don't doubt that if I didn't have this community to sort of bring me back to reality, I would have internalized a lot of the attacks, you know? And the thing is, it's not even, it's not even necessarily explicit attacks. Probably with the ISFJ, it more is, but I would suspect with the ESTP, it's just sort of a disappearing act. Totally, I am. Um, it was. A, it was a disappearing act. He would disappear, at least in the relationship, um, with one. He would disappear, and then like four months later, I get a random phone call from him telling me that he had like a dream about me or whatever. So you know, like who doesn't like to hear that, right? I mean, I did, I guess, at the time, but um. But after that, it would be another three months of, like, nothing. In fact, 
he invited me to a 4th of July party that they have in his hometown in Pennsylvania. And apparently the town is very patriotic. So I was like super excited because I'm like, yay, get to celebrate 4th of July. And I really like, you know, in a really patriotic like town. Um, and then, so I travel out there two hours to spend a weekend with him and he ignores me the whole time. In fact, we, we didn't do anything physical, nothing. I was like, why the fuck am I here? I, I, t- I talked to his friends, you know, mostly. And I, you know, I proceeded to get high and, and wow. drunk. But Listen, but it was like... A- Rachel, I'm sure he didn't start ignoring you until after you had sex with him. We didn't even have sex that trip. Then that's really ignoring you. Yeah. I'm like, you know... I mean, why? I mean, why bother inviting me? You know? Yeah, I was literally like all by myself. Um, luckily, some people in his town went to my the college also, so I would be able to talk to them. But it was just kind of like I I spoke on the phone with my friends most of the time because I'm like, why am I here? It just made me really feel like nothing. Like it was a very good relationship for making me feel like I had no worth. Like that, I was just kind of disposable. And yeah, at the same time, maybe because he's ESP and you're dual, or for whatever reason, you definitely felt a, a like a, a snappy connection with him. Yeah, I mean, um, we took a lot of the same classes, and he admired that I was an artist, and he like physically was really attracted to me, but like he just couldn't, he couldn't maintain it. It's that he just could not maintain the interest in me. I was too much for him. He might've even said that at one point, you know, that it was just like too much of a commitment to be with me and easier to be with multiple women who he didn't really care. Well, maybe he cared about them. He might've, but, um, so what's I, the difference? What's the difference between ENTP and ESTP in relationships? Oh man. <laughs> well, you actually your your words match up to your actions a lot of the times. You know, you I mean, you do ideate a lot and have things that you want to do, but some of them I I even forget that you say. So it's like you follow, you have better follow through and you don't make me feel like what is the status in the relationship? Like you, you wanted the status like right away. Well, I think one of the differences is that the ESTP favors physical FE, which means there's no better affirmation than on the physical level than having sex with lots of different women. Because you're being affirmed by different people, you know, over and over again. They, they show you in the most real way they can show you that you're, you're valuable. Which is, say, they have sex with you. But the thing is, I value the metaphysical aspect of FE. I know that you value me because of our words, mostly. And I know that you value me because... You and I are on the same page regarding the status of things. It's a big difference in terms of metaphysical or physical FE. Um, granted, I definitely want to have sexual intercourse, but that's not really an FE thing for me. You know, it's like it's more of a FI SI thing. Yeah, I think we've discovered that. Well, I I feel like I've discovered that within you that like when we got really comfortable, our when we would have sex, it would be very intimate in our own way. Like, you know, I, I have trouble maintaining the FE for a long time anyway. So right. <laughs> um, this is, here's the thing. It's like you use FE as a tool. I have it as an absolute value and, and vice versa with the TI. And so when we first started being together, there was, we were trying and that ended up causing complications because the FE 
was just confusing us each other. We're just confusing each other with it. It was. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> And uh, you know, we're both trying to like bend over backwards to be accommodating. And the reality is neither party wanted the other party to be accommodating. We, we just didn't know it yet. You know, it's like we want the other party as we, what we learned was we want the other party as authentically as they are, because the more authentic they are, the more we like them. I imagine, I'm assuming this goes both ways. Definitely goes yeah. my direction towards you. And, uh, and that, all of our little workarounds for being with the wrong person um, not only didn't <laughs> help in this circumstance, but hurt, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. But I can I say something that I, you, the thing that you have in common with ESTP is that you are very masculine. Like, there's no, there's no, like, you're in touch with your feminine side, which is a good thing. Um, but I mean, like, I don't have any questions. <laughs> like, there's no, like, like, you're just, you're very masculine. You are. I don't know how to well, thanks, explain baby. it. I will say, as I said to somebody in a, I think it was Kankin Krishna Sarmapa Goose, it's something like, um, <laughs> you know, like, says something along the lines of, you're the crush of a lot of women here. And, you know, hearing that, hearing from you, like, that you perceive me as very masculine. I've heard from other people, too, that they perceive me as masculine. I can't help but think, what fucking kind of bizarro world is this? Because, <laughs> you know, I have... Just, I, that's just not how... It, you know, when I grew up, there were two kinds of males. There were those who were good at sports... And were therefore cool and popular, and mm -hmm. those who were not good at sports, who therefore were failures and and you know, like too feminine and stuff. I yeah. was I was definitely in the latter camp, and I I was definitely in the latter camp throughout my childhood and and through high school. Although high school things got a little different because I was just so weird in high school, so so <laughs> overtly extrovertedly strange. That um, that people didn't quite know what to do with me, and so I I kind of just was I had my group of friends and was largely left alone by everybody else. Uh, well, that's not a bad thing no, because no, no, not a bad I thing. yeah I guess for for me as an INFJ I can definitely tell you that uh, I was definitely left alone. There were a lot of male. ESTP, ESFP, Italian, like strong, like personalities, and a lot of yo uh, Rachel, ESTJ Rachel, mean Rachel, get your ass over here. Hey Guido, come here. I want to introduce <laughs> you to Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you that fireball haircut. You know what I'm talking about? Uh -uh. Like the one that goes like that. Oh uh, my gosh. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, every yeah. If you watch, like, if you you know the people from. Uh, it's like kid and play but sure? rounder. Is it kid kid and play but rounder? I don't know. It's just so. It's like it's supposed to look like Dragon Ball Z. Oh, okay. It, it's so like they gel their hair up so it's like a fire. Oh, okay. Looks, yeah, yeah. Like, I know what you're talking about. Ugh. Oh, it's um, the Guido way. And so, I was uh, you know, there was the that group like the Guidos. So there were a lot of that, and then. Uh, a lot of ISTJs, ENTJs who were like super, like, um, you know, they were so focused on their school, they didn't even go out to party at all. Um, and then there were like kind of my group who was like the ESFJs, ISFJs, um, probably ENFP, who were more of like on the outskirts of things. But yeah, like I was not, I was not known as, I wouldn't call myself popular at all. I, I was dead set in the middle. And in fact, someone who was really mean um, hacked into like people's AOL accounts and they rated the girls in high school in my grade from one to a hundred. And I was 50. So <laughs> I literally was like, no, that's that awful. Dab in the middle. That's awful. Isn't that awful? Anyway, I don't like to think about depressing things like that. Um, 
can I talk to you <laughs> about Summer from Rick and Morty? We had a conversation yesterday, yeah. I think, about whether she was ESTP or ESFP. I watched a couple, rewatched a couple of episodes this morning. I've decided I think she's ESFP. Thoughts? Did you catch that? Can you see? Uh, what was the last thing? I said, um, what do you think about Summer being, like, make an argument for ESTP versus ESFP or the other way around. What do you think? <sighs> ESTP, I think she shows it mostly in the episodes where she loses control over it. Like she's not had, she has no parental uh, supervision. So there's this one where um, it's like a Mad Max, Mad Max scene. And she like, it's actually this one, the person that she cooks up with would be but still she, she's like shooting guns and she's like dominating like men and like uh, but but I think I'm going to Hold on, Rachel. Rachel, hey, can you hang up and try again? Because your connection's really spotty. Yeah. I can't hear you hardly. It's all like, eh, okay. eh, 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 eh. it's like that. Like a sheep. She sounds a lot like a sheep. She's my precious little sheep. See this red spot? It's from squeezing the worms out of my nose too vigorously this morning. You guys get worms in your nose? Those little white things that squeeze out. I get those. I get a lot of worms. It's like worms galore. Anyway, Rachel's back. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I basically I caught that. nothing that you said about <laughs> Summer. Oh, okay. So there's this one episode where she is kind of running loose and wild in like a Mad Max kind of, uh, uh, what do they call that? There's like a word for that. But like... um. So they're all savages and they're like shooting each other and stuff. And that's where she is actually pretty dominant because Rick is pretty much like summer. You could go do whatever you want. And she does. And she's like, she is in a relationship with the main dude and she's shoot. She's like shooting guns and she's like really just like savage. Okay. But would an ESFP also be able to handle that shit with an SD Don? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, Yeah. Okay, cause I think that I put up a, a quote from her today, which was um, just because <laughs> losers look stuff up while the rest of us are carping all them DMs. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that she is an ESFP. I mean, that's a dumb. <laughs> she probably doesn't even know what carpe, carpe all them DMs. Carping, <laughs> carping all those DMs. Yeah. But the thing is, she, the other thing she said that I thought was was very dumb when she was oh it's like when she's on the couch right and uh the, the cat has been made super smart and she says uh <laughs> she says um and then the cat's like says something oh right he's the cat's talking about the appalling cat show on tv and Summer goes, aw, it recognizes other cats on TV. <laughs> right. that, so it's got, that, at that point, I was like, okay, she's got to be ESFP. Yeah. And then, I mean, in the first episode, she is, like, going after a dude in, in, in at school. And she's like, oh, I can't wait to see him. And then Rick freezes him and then oh, right. basically yeah. kills him yeah, right. yeah and then yeah and then summers uh has like a whole like memorial for the dude that's like a very esfp thing to do like to be like so enamored with a guy <laughs> <She's> that, like, <laughs> right. and she's always on her phone right um and she could care less about anything intellectual right i mean um, but the thing that I like about Summer with being an ESFP is that she recognizes Rick for Rick. Like, she doesn't ever try to, like, she thinks he's nuts, but they kind of work 
well together. Yeah, and then, yeah. Be, yeah. And um, Rick is getting to a point where he's kind of letting Summer take more of her own stance in the adventures. Like she, he's he, she's becoming more independent through him. Summer um, kind of reminds and, me of a debater I used to have. Uh, she <laughs> she was not much of a debater, but we had her doing Congress, which is a lot easier to do. Kind of, you don't have to be all you have to you don't have to be logical to do it. You can just be passionate mm -hmm. and stuff. Anyway, yeah, Evelyn and uh, she and I had a very collegial relationship, and supposedly, according to socionics, the relationship between ENTP and ESFP is collegial. That that I don't know what mm -hmm. that that pairing is called, but that pairing is refer is described as a collegial relationship uh, by socionics. So cool. Um, it makes sense then that uh, Summer and Rick would have that sort of relationship, you know, which they do. Yeah, I, yeah, they do. They do. So I really, you know, I think there was a, a really good. I don't know if you saw it, but there's a good YouTube that kind of like breaks down all the characters um, into their types. And that one is where I saw that she, they said that he, she was an ESFP. And uh, because I think out of all of them, she's a little bit harder to uh, type because she's not at the forefront a lot. But Well, she also has a certain don't give a fuck attitude about her. That, yeah. That, that smacks of ESTP. But of course, that's the thing. When you have a character written, it's not going to be... Um, the person who's writing that stuff is not probably writing types, you know? No, 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 no. And, no, but... And uh... To the extent that they deviate from, <laughs> from the actual reality of what a type would be in their character, it's because they aren't perfect in their writing, basically. If they really mm -hmm. understand their character and were perfect in their writing, it wouldn't really deviate much from a type because that would be... A perfect understanding of a character is one that that uh, resonates archetypally as a kind of person with mm. with the reader or the watcher or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I think you're right. I think she is an ESFP. I see it. Now, what and about I, the I, mom? So they typed her, the ones, the, the video that I saw, they typed her as an INTJ. Hmm. I mean, she seems to have too much FE concern for me to be an INTJ. Like, she really wants to be, you know, <laughs> it's like she gets the dentist treatment in the show. Yes, yeah, she does. Because she's, that, she's a horse uh, heart surgeon, but only no one animals. considers her to be. Yeah, but, only for horses. Not only for, yeah, not and she's, horses. you know. She has to keep on reminding people that uh, she's a doctor right. <laughs> and a surgeon who go, no one oh, cares. Oh, well, you're not a real doctor. You're a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That, that's the dentist treatment. Yep, she gets the dentist treatment. So what would you say? Is she more of an ISTJ? No, I would say she's probably an ESTP. Oh. Yeah. She's pretty damn dominant. Yeah. She's an ESTP. Jerry is... What is Jerry, anyway? ISFJ? E -S -F -J. ESFJ. 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 He's a totally ESFJ. I mean, he's the first one. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, besides Rick. Besides Rick, like, that I was able to type. Um, because he's just so, like, family! <laughs> What are you doing? They have to go to school. <laughs> right. Tr just blindly following traditions. Yeah. But yeah, we'll get, yeah. But then not afraid to sacrifice his traditions to get something out of it. Like, if you're going to take my mm -hmm. child and go blah, 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 then you have to make my dog super smart. Yeah, right. right exactly. And then, oh my God, just the whole Mr. Meeseeks episode. He asked for the most simple thing and he still can't do it. You know, he he wanted to get a uh, something off. He wanted to shave off some, uh, some time from his golf swing. He wanted to perfect it, and like he couldn't do it. And he had to ask like a million me seeks, and they're all like dying because it, it, they're like, 
here's the thing. He's actually a cross between an ISFJ and an ESFJ because he's both TE polar and NI polar. Mm. So yeah, he's definitely NI polar too. I I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. makes him a, a, a something that's not possible in real life, but is possible in a TV show and a character, which is he's a cross between an ISFJ and an ESFJ that got the weakest qualities of both of them. <laughs> Yeah, and he and uh, Beth do have some, like, really nice moments where they do remember that they love each other, but she's just so, like, she's the, she wears the pants. She well, wears the pants. And then... They have some SI validation with each other is what it is. So, mm -hmm. because that's another reason why she's an ESTP is because she... She validates the SI between them on some level. She goes, well, you know, we have history together and memories together and stuff like that. And that makes sense with sort of fifth slot absolute value SI. It's not very active, <laughs> but nevertheless matters on some level, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It, it definitely does. Yo, they're so, it's so interesting. Um, she, yeah. I think mean, she's definitely an ESTP because do you, okay. So she actually makes up a lot of excuses for Rick. They don't have the best relationship, but she'll always stand up for him. Right. But, but like. ESTP is royal. I mean, the thing is, this, uh, this brings us back to the question, the topic of ESTPs as a relationship partner for INFJ. Now yeah. that <laughs> ESTP wasn't loyal in that sense, but here's the thing about polar FI. So while our um, third slot FE plays out differently, ENTPs and ESTPs, ENTPs being much more concerned about the statuses of things and ESTPs being much more concerned about the realities of things. Um, mm. The seventh slot FI plays out very similarly because for both types, it's an absolute value and the physical aspect of it is the and the metaphysical aspect they're just both equally just it's like they're so weak that the, the aspect distinction doesn't even really make any sense it's like the metaphysical aspect of it makes no sense to me the physical aspect i can at least experience it and know it uh it seems like taylor has maybe more trouble than i do with the physical aspect though so maybe he has less trouble with the metaphysical but regardless i don't even understand what the metaphysical aspect of it is frankly but um, regardless, that makes both parties, both types, similar in their relationship with their FI once they've, once it's been invested into something, which yeah. is like, they want their FI protected, ultimately. And the ESTP wants his feelings protected just as much as I want my feelings protected. That makes sense because in the episode of Pickle Rick, when they go to the family counselor, Like, Beth is, like, full-on, like, protecting Rick. Like, the the counselor is like, so do you know exactly what's in that syringe? She does. It's the it's the thing to bring him back. It's the, what, a, what do you call it? Antidote. The, yeah, antidote. She knows, but she refuses to say it. She refuses to say it in the... Uh, in the meeting because she's not going to go. She's not going to be the one who, you know, rats out her dad. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. It's uh, and then like, there's another episode where they go into her world. Remember she, like he like builds a universe for her and the, the lakes are filled with rainbows and she has like a, a <laughs> Like the guy, there's a guy there that she used to have a crush on, and he just like lives there with all her imaginary <laughs> friends. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and she basically is like, she has like sudden realization, like all of this shit is so fake. Like, why did you do this? Like, she has a like, it's not realistic, which bugs her. She it hit it hits a home, but they always make up with each other because they realize that how much they love each other. I mean, and 
I mean, just, their relationship just seems like an ENTP ESTP relationship to me. It, mm-hmm. The two action types respecting each other fundamentally in their skills because they're the same tool function. So they can see it like, you know, I respect ESTPs. I respect their abilities in terms of action. I understand oh how action plays out in life. And I, I'm just much more heavily uh, attentive to the metaphysical aspect of action but because it's my dominant function the other action function makes sense to me intellectually now at the same time it doesn't make sense to me when i'm trying to do shit like i'm not sure how it is that i go from uh needing to wash the car for days and days and days and days days to finally actually just doing it or (laughs) or knowing i need to pay the car registration for months and have it hanging over me, and finally, one day I just do it. <laughs> I, I don't know how, what causes that shift, but at least I understand that element to it enough to respect the way that ESTPs, and when the context is right, they can get an amazing amount of shit done. Yeah, but, they they do. I mean, look. I, I'm sorry, I heard something out there. I gotta check on my mom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, she's fine. She's in a really good mood today, too. Good. Uh, I gotta pee. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we stop this video, and I, I just probably upload this directly. And I'll, sure. And then I'll, we'll just continue chatting. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to... I just don't want anyone to think that I'm shitting on ESTPs. It's not that at all. Like, it's just... I'm making now as to why certain relationships went the way that they did now knowing my type. Sure. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks you're shitting on ESTPs. Okay. <laughs> um, Cause I'm really not, I'm not trying to, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm just making connections. Well, the thing is my, my reasoning on why ESTPs and INFJs are not the proper match, but rather, ESTPs and ISFJs are the proper match Mm -hmm. is because of the metaphysicality, physicality distinction between dominant functions. So um, for INTP and ESFJ, FE, dominant function of ESFJ, is a metaphysical function. TI, the dominant function of the INTP, is also a metaphysical function. So they're duals and their physicality, metaphysicality, natures line up. However, for ENTP ISFJ, it's the opposite. They're physical, ENTP is metaphysical. For ESTP and INFJ, it's the opposite. INFJ is metaphysical, ESTP is physical. And it's also worth noting that ENTP and INFJ are the two most metaphysical types. So... Yeah, it... Yeah, Whereas, you know, ISFJ is not the most physical, ESTP is not the most physical, but um, they are, they are, that is their dominant frame is physicality. So there's always going to be a conflict between those, between our duels and us over what really matters. Is it, is it the symbols or the things themselves? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because, like, you know, with my grandma, you should go to the bathroom. <laughs> we can talk about this later. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we're, let's finish out the topic. We're talking about ESTPs. Talk about your okay. grandma. Okay. Um, so, I, my grandma has always been very religious, even when my grandpa wasn't. He was Protestant. She was some sort of Catholic. Or orthodox, weird. My grandpa. But uh, Super Catholic she taught herself well. to drive. Super Catholic. Like, Opus Dei. I- I'm not joking. She really is. She's Opus Dei. Um, 
she she taught herself to drive and she damn did she drive when she drove it everyone had to watch out for her forget about everyone else watch out janice is on the road because she's coming through <laughs> like like i almost died twice in a car with her <laughs> like because she would just go through red lights and be like oops <laughs> like no <laughs> And she always wanted me to be a nun. And she always liked my art. She loves when I, I do art for her. Um, but then she would make a suggestion of like, you should work for a card company. And I feel a little bit of a chase with her too. Like she's never really able to pin me down. Like my, like she's always wanted me to work in the same nursing home that she's in. So that she could be close with me. But I know it's so that I could be her personal, you know, gopher. It's just like, you know, I can't see you. Yeah, anymore. your, your internet is kind of. It was choppy. just a tough relationship because, it, yeah, oh God, that's what my house internet is like. But, you know. <laughs> Um, she was, you know, I was never really able to, she was, we didn't have, we didn't watch cable. We watched 60 minutes and her programs. Um, and if I wanted to, like, if I was sleeping over her house, I would have to only, I could only call her like Christian books, like precious moments. (laughs) Yeah. And she has a lot of, yeah, it was bad. Um, and, but the, but the thing is, she is fiercely loyal. Like, she would always stick up for us. And um, she always means well. She's a very smart woman, too. She, she was, in, I think, a mayor of Yonkers for, like, a little while. Um, did she make you color Jesus white? Oh God, she would. If I, oh my gosh, I could tell you the story. I'm gonna tell you the story. So, one summer, me and my cousin were like 13, 14, and uh, the movie Austin Powers came out. At the same time, my grandma was recovering from some sort of like operation, and she had this like breathalyzer thing. It was like a tube, and she had to blow into it just to to get a gauge of her breath. So we're watching the movie, which was rare. I can't believe that we were able to even like watch that. <sighs> but we we're, we're watching it and my cousin goes to me, she's like, I dare you to ask grandma if that's her penis and larger pump. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. So I'm like, grandma, is that, uh, is that apparatus your penis and larger pump? Woof! Like, I got I, my. I got she got called my mom. The tape. I could never watch. She she said I could never watch the the movie again. What was the movie? <laughs> what was the movie? Austin Powers. You know. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't appreciate that at all. But that was like one time we actually like had a little bit of fun <laughs> with the uh, yeah. Well. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's just the the issue of whether you prefer, whether you are basically a map person, a map person or a territory person. Now, mm-hmm. I, I would note that, like, amongst intuitives, ENTJs are the most sensory followed by ENFJs. Well, maybe it's the other way around. ENFJs might be the most sensory. Like, you know, basically um, a more physical manifestation of an intuitive. But Yeah. I guess, you know, because TE DOM, ENTJ, that's, they're a physical type. Uh, and FI DOM, INFP, they're a physical type. Are those the only two physical intuitives? 
Let's see, ENTP, INTP, uh, INTJ, INFJ, ENFJ, oh, ENFP. Yeah, there's only two physical intuitives, INFP and um, ENTJ. Yeah. So, so the thing is, for those two types, ENTJ's dual is correct. That's because their dual is ISFP, right? Yeah. 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 So, and I can see that working. But and for <laughs> INFP, and their dual is ESTJ. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it should work. For the, according to my my hypothesis here on this, it should work uh, for their to go with their normal duels. Yeah, However, for I ENFP, mean... they should go <laughs> with um, ENF. So it's like some people have have two two people competing for them potentially. You know, like ENFP should be with uh, INTJ. Yeah. That's the classic pairing. Whereas INFP should be with ESTJ, which is their dual. Yeah. Yeah. Because INTJ is not ENFP's dual. ISTJ no. is ENFP's dual. Exactly. That's so interesting. It really is. Um, it makes sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely more metaphysical. Like uh, on the flip side, my grandma was always um, kind of disappointed that I didn't drive up to see her more. Like I was always a little nervous going on the highways up there cause they're kind of complicated. And so, but she was always like, well, that's like no big deal. But she really, she accomplished a lot. I mean, she had six children. She was able to maintain a household when her husband died at a really young age. Um, again, like I said, she was mayor of Yonkers, which is so bizarre, uh, <laughs> for a little while. Um, she knows, she has so many friends. She knows all of their names. She knows all their family members' names. I mean, it's very impressive. My my grandma is such a people person. It's I admire that a lot because she has a lot of patience for them. Um, she's just she's she's a good person. She really is, and I'm lucky to have her um, in my family. It's just so interesting understanding now why our relation was the way it was. Well, I want to know because that I was. That the there's the, the reason we're both interested and note relationships between or note the types ESTPs and ISFJs we both kind of note them a lot. It occurs to me that there are there are eight types. You know, half the types are misdueled. Okay. Yes. That but six of those types that are misdueled are intuitives mm. and. Two of them that are misdueled are sensors, because oh. you've got, yeah. and you've got INFJ, INTP, ENTP, ENFJ, INTJ, and ENFP are intuitives who need to be dueled, who need to be paired up with another intuitive, and. Yeah. ESTP and ISFJ are the two sensing types that need to be paired up with another sensor. And for the rest of them, they need to be paired with with their dual. So basically what this tells us is six of the preceding types are intuitives. And, um, and six of the preceding types are metaphysical that's true which is it's fair to say that on a three to a ratio of of 
75%, perceiving is a metaphysical modality, set of modalities, and uh, judging, as they call them in MBTI or whatever, the judging functions, the T's and F's, comprise uh, fundamentally more, 75% weighted heavily towards the physical. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that makes it, it does make a difference. It really does. Like, I mean, if, if you're, I'm, I'm definitely, I, I see the metaphysical side of myself now. I like to gather information through reading. I like to sometimes go into hermit mode. And it's nice having a partner who understands that who understands that even though I may be, you know, not all over town, that I'm still being productive. Well, you're being as you need to be, which I totally get. Like, you know, I started, we talked earlier briefly, and then I had to go do something with mom. I said, I'll call you back in a little bit when I'm done with mom. I called you back and you started to do with your hair. I totally get that. You don't want to sit there and wait for me to call you back. You're going to start messing with something. So <laughs> well, yeah. well, you know, I, I, it's totally understandable. And, and, then, <laughs> and then when once I, you know, I called you back, you know, and you didn't answer. So I started messing with something. So I started messing with something. And then you texted me like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And, you know, we went back and forth. And before we knew it, it we had push this thing back for a couple of hours because we were both doing random shit. Mm -hmm. I also got the time wrong. Oh. I did my math wrong. So oh. <laughs> but that, that's something you understand too. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> we both need time to work on our shit and play as we feel like playing a lot. And the last few days with the debate tournaments and various other expectations placed upon me and yada, yada, yada. I've been feeling rather put upon in general. So it's nice to have a day where my dad is out of town. Everything's always calmer and chiller around here when my dad's out of town. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can make a video with you and I can work on a Gabby Weatherman some more. I think after right. after we're done with this here, I'm going to um, potentially later at some point live stream me working on a Gabby Weatherman. And yeah, why I not? I won't even be looking at the chat or anything. Probably. <laughs> I'll just be working on it. And, you know, why not, right? I like it. Yeah, I mean, so, it seems like the people in, in the chat like to chat with each other, too. So, who knows what can happen? What kind of magic will happen while you're making music? It's right. cool. I like it. It's a quirky thing. Um, can we dedicate a... Since we pretty much went through all the characters of Rick and Morty except for Morty, can we dedicate... Um, a segment to him. Oh, yeah. He's an ISFJ. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> He's definitely an ISFJ. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, like, Rick is always like, <laughs> Rick is always telling him that he's ruining everything. <laughs> when he, you know, <laughs> like, like, if, you know, like, if when Morty has, like, the chance to, like, be the dominant person. Yeah. Um, he seems, he's, he's, Morty's a very, like, developed, in a sense, competent, and generally, you know, head on his shoulders -y kind of ISFJ. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I think the person typed him as an INFP, but um, I see what you're saying about the ISFJ. And they're I mean. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're duels, yeah. right? That's an example. That's an yeah. ISFJ uh, ENTP relationship where it's like constantly bickering back and forth and stuff. Yeah, they do. They argue a lot. And Morty's always telling Rick how terrible of a person he is. Like, right. I know that you can join us. Don't think you're going to get it over me. <laughs> like, they, they do. They do. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. He's highly critical. Um, okay, well. Good job with the show. We covered pretty much all yeah. the characters. You know, I, I agree with these uh, these other people who typed it that Bird Person is an INFJ. Yeah, I do too. 
Uh, that's the whole that's the whole funniness behind this. Like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, R.I.P. Bird man, bird person, bird person is uh, R.I.P. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's end this video then. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. And if you do, eat twice as much cheese next time.